Tucker Carlson is also back with us this morning from Manchester, who is there, and you've got a special guest with you this morning. Well, I've answered the question, who won last night's debate? Unanimously, it was Mary Catherine Hamm. She was one of the debate moderators. She's a Fox News contributor, my friend, and she's sitting right here to my left. Congratulations. Hello. You thank were you fantastic very much. last well, night. Well, thank you very You've much. got about 20 minutes sleep, yeah. but you're up here joining us anyway. I am. So I, I want to play some of your questions from last night, because right. anyone who didn't see this should not miss these. Watch this. Uh, Senator Cruz, on the campaign trail, you've promised voters a lot and fast. If you're elected president, you say you'd end Common Core immediately, abolish the IRS, and do away with sanctuary cities. How do you intend to implement this aggressive ag agenda within your constitutional authority? I can end Common Core at the federal level is because Obama is abusing executive power. You know, the second av avenue of change is foreign policy. The two big legislative initiatives I'm campaigning on are repealing Obamacare and adopting a simple flat tax to abolish the IRS. How you... Question to the constitutional scholar, were you satisfied with the answer? Well, I knew he would have a good answer here, um, but I wanted him to draw this line and I wanted them to talk about what is the line because the... Uh, the what can the president do? The allure of the imperial presidency is bipartisan, right? Yes, it is. So as soon as you get in there, you want to do the stuff you do. Um, so I thought he had a good answer. He left legislation for the third thing for a reason, because it's the hardest one, right? And his brand is that he doesn't work with the normal Washington players, right. but you have to do some of that to actually get a bill that would abolish the IRS, right? So I wanted him to figure that out and, and talk about it a bit, and I think he did. Mary First, Catherine, yeah. how did it go over with, with the audience, and who many of them will, will in turn be voting? Um, because if he's, you're talking about this imperial presidency, is it kind of a pot kettle situation? Didn't, didn't we hear that every action that President Obama made, once, once we have a GOP president, if we do, could just do the very same thing? Well, I think, and this was the interesting part with Senator Cruz, and I knew that because of his legal background he would go there, is, is describing, okay, here are the things I can get rid of with executive authority. Live by executive authority, die by it. The things that Obama has enacted right. that way I can get rid of. So I wanted him to draw that line and then, and then just sort of tease out what his philosophy was and then go to the rest of these guys about how they would walk that line. It's a serious question, especially for conservatives. Another question that you had was around social issues last, last night. Let's watch this and get your response to their answers. Watch Young people across the political spectrum increasingly favor same-sex marriage. However, young voters have not moved to the left on abortion. How do you speak to millennials on both these issues while Democrats will inevitably charge intolerance and extremism? I respect people that believe differently, but I believe deeply that marriage should be between one man and one woman. On the issue of life, to me the issue of life is not a political issue, it's a human rights issue, and it's a difficult issue. Mary, Catherine, were you satisfied with their response? So he didn't get into the millennials specifically a bunch, but what he did do is give a sensitive answer on social issues. And, and one of the things that I really wanted to highlight here is that same-sex marriage and the pro-life issue are not the same. They poll differently with young people. There's ground where GO, the GOP can talk to young people on the life issue. Now, I thought what, in, what was interesting about Senator Rubio is that one of the things he did is he had this, ba this bad moment earlier in the, in the debate, but a, a sort of a secondary story here is that he got this little fundraising boom from this pro-life answer because people appreciated hearing that from the stage, and so I think he helped himself out a bit there. So you were sitting in the room when this epic fight broke out. Christy <laughs> came. He's a ferocious character. He obviously decided to try and take up Marco Rubio, right. and he went after him on the question of callowness. He said, you're a totally rehearsed person. Every time you get a question, you give a scripted answer, to which Rubio repeated the same line four times. Here's part of what happened. Let's dispel once and for all with this fiction that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. This notion that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing is just not there true. It is. Let's dispel with this fiction that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. He is trying to change this country. He wants America to become more like the rest of the world. Anyone who believes that Barack Obama isn't doing what he's doing on purpose doesn't understand what we're dealing with here. So I obviously, like everyone else, watched that answer four times. I didn't right. really understand the point he was trying to make. Barack Obama does know what he's doing. That's better than not knowing what he's doing. What was he trying to say, do you think, and did it work? I think he had an answer. Yes. And he was going back to that well. Unfortunately, that's exactly the criticism that Christie was making. Exactly. <laughs> and so it did, not, it did not work out well. And there were other ways to get out of that situation. The funny thing is, I think he suffers a bit from being a, a good debater in general because yes. the expectations are high for him. And then you go there at the first segment that doesn't work for you. The rest of his debate, 
was quite good. It was. I thought. Uh, some good answers on ISIS and other issues that are complex, but people will remember that moment. For sure. I mean, and the press is kind of defined. I mean, that is the right. defining moment, would you say? Well, I will say also it was a good night for the governors, and Christie, of course, came out there swinging. He was leaning on that podium. He's having a great time. I do think it's a little double edged sword for him. If you're too mean, you get less out of that hit. He's tough. Yeah. He's really, really He tough. loves it out there, yeah. too. He does love yeah, it. I wouldn't want to fight him. Along with national security, foreign policy, the economy, uh, the drug addiction problem in New Hampshire is something that voters really care about. And last night, we were, our producers right. were watching the Google Analytics, and when the, the candidates mentioned some personal stories, personal ties that they have to this very problem, there was a large response. Let's listen to a few of those moments. My older sister, Miriam, who was my half-sister, uh, struggled her whole life with drug and alcohol addiction. I, I still remember my father and me driving up to get Miriam out of that crack house to try to convince her she needed to be a mom to, to my nephew Joey. About five, six years ago, Miriam died of an overdose. Joey walked in and found her dead. I'm pro-life, and I'm pro-life not just for the nine months in the womb. I'm pro-life for when they get out, and it's a lot more complicated. 16-year-old heroin-addicted drug girl on the floor of the county lockup. I'm pro-life for her life. The 42-year-old lawyer who's taking Oxycontin and can't get out of bed and support his family. I'm pro-life for his life. Every one of those lives is an individual gift from God. Who won on this issue? Well, I think... <laughs> It wasn't about who won on those, frankly. I think the GOP is not generally great at bringing in these personal stories and being vulnerable like that sometimes and connecting with people in that way. I thought Cruz's story about his sister was really great. Uh, there's stories about how it was sort of a hushed moment in the press room. Uh, Governor Christie also brought in uh, his daughters and said, when, when speaking about empowerment for women, which I thought was a nice moment. And Senator Rubio talked about his brother when speaking about the VA and all the, the mess that he has to go through, the bureaucratic mess every time he goes in to have something fixed that he had injured in the Army. So I think hitting people with those stories and saying, look, we're real people who have relatives who have actual problems and who we want to live better lives uh, is a strategy that works for candidates and they're not great at employing it all the time. Last night was interesting. That's for sure. So Donald Trump got booed by the audience. I don't know how loud it was in the actual debate room. It sounded loud from where we were. And then he went after the audience and accused them of basically being in the, the funders of Jeb Bush and part of the problem. It, it, I've never seen anything like it. Did it work, do you think? Well, we've seen candidates go after the media. We've yes. seen them go after the moderators, seen them go after their fellow candidates. Now the audience is in. You know, this is just an all inclusive <laughs> election this time. It was around. kind of an amazing yeah. response. You know, was it effective? I, they, they booed again in yes. the room. I think he pretty quickly realized I'm going to move back to the candidates who I'm fighting instead of the actual audience. <laughs> well, wow. Mary Kelly, we have to ask New you. New rules. We'd, ha we'd be yes. totally remiss if we didn't ask you what everyone yeah. was talking about last night on social media and beyond was that opening sequence that ABC had where they were announcing the candidates. And here we have some video. They announced ben, Dr. Ben Carson's name, but he didn't, he told Tucker later he didn't hear it. So he's standing back there and then all the other candidates just keep walking past him. You're there as a debate moderator. What must be going through your mind? Well, first of all, this is clearly my diabolical plan to make sure that this goes as viral as possible. You can't trust new media folks like me. We will do stuff like this. No, I think it was very, very loud inside the room. And it did not you didn't hear that noise as much on the TV, but it was very loud in there. He did not hear his name. And then there's a, there's a pileup, you know? There's a snowstorm here. It's much like a car wreck. And there was a little bit of a pileup there, and they couldn't figure out who was coming out next. But another way backstage to see them interact in this strange situation we had the camera back there and it was interesting you know who is totally unbothered by this like completely unbothered by it? ben carson yes didn't bother him at all and he made that joke when he came out about you know maybe you already thought i dropped out of the race which was a perfect carson moment that's why people <laughs> love him he plays it off i don't think anything yeah, bothers. i guess maybe when you've done brain surgery nothing rattles you or something that's probably That's it. Impressive. Mary Catherine, it's great to see you. Thank I know you. you've had no sleep. Thanks for doing this. Thanks very much. Enjoyed yeah, it. Nice job last night. Wonderful job. Thanks, Mary Catherine.